Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In the previous introductory video, we understood the basics of ADC. So in this video, let us learn about the dual slope ADC. So this dual slope ADC is integrating type ADC, meaning that it uses the integrator circuit for the conversion. So this type of ADC provides the high resolution with good accuracy, but they have a slow conversion time and due to that they are not used for the data acquisition. For example, they are not used in the signal processing applications where a lot of data needs to be acquired continuously and they are preferred in the applications where the signal is changing very slowly. But due to their good accuracy and high resolution, they are used in the measurement instruments where the good reliability is the essential. And in fact, they are commonly used in digital multimeter. So before we go through this dual slope ADC, let us quickly go through the single slope ADC, which will not only help us in understanding the working of this dual slope ADC, but it will also help us in understanding why the dual slope ADC is used over the single slope ADC. So in case of this single slope ADC, the reference voltage is integrated using the integrator and then it is compared with the input voltage using the comparator. So this reference voltage is integrated until the integrated output is equal to the input voltage and this time t gives the measure of the input voltage. So let us understand it. So in case of the integrator, the output voltage can be given as minus 1 by RC times integration of input voltage. And here, as the reference voltage is negative, so the slope of the integrated output will be positive. And at time t, the output voltage V out can be given as t times V reference divided by RC. And if you see over here, at time t, the output voltage is equal to input voltage. So we can compare this expression with input voltage. So from this we can say that this input voltage V in is equal to T times V reference divided by RC. Now for the given ADC, the reference voltage and the value of R and C are constant. That means we can say that this magnitude of the input voltage is directly proportional to this T. So this time T gives us the measure of the input voltage. So now let us understand how we can measure this integrating time. So as you can see in this diagram, the output of the comparator is given to the AND gate. And through this AND gate, the clock pulses are applied to this counter. So whenever the output of the comparator is high, then the clock pulses will be applied to this counter. So as soon as this counter gets this clock pulses, it starts counting. Now before the conversion starts, the counter has been reset to the zero. So whenever the conversion starts, then the integrated output will be less than the input voltage. That means the output of the comparator will be high. And due to that, this clock pulses will be applied to the counter. Or we can say that during the integration time, this counter starts counting. And as soon as the output voltage of the integrator is just equal to input voltage, then the output of the comparator will become low. And due to that, the output of this AND gate will also become low. So now, no clock pulses will be applied to this counter. And whatever count that is present at the output of this counter is directly proportional to the input voltage. So in this way, this a single slope ADC converts the input voltage into the binary output. Now in this circuit, there is also a reset switch and it will get closed momentarily whenever the output of the comparator will become low. So basically it ensures that no charge remains across the capacitor whenever we start the new conversion. So this is the basic function of the single slope ADC. Now here as this reference voltage and the RC time constant is fixed, so the slope of the integrator will remain 
fixed and depending on the input voltage this time t will change so if the input voltage is higher then the time which is required for the integration will be higher but the slope of this integrator will remain same and due to the single slope this adc is known as the single slope adc and this is the very simple type of integrating adc but in this case if you notice if the value of r or c changes then the slope will also change and now for the same input we will get the different time for example if the value of r reduces then the time required by the integrator to reach to the input voltage will also reduce and now for the same input voltage we will get the lesser time and practically this thing bound to happen because the value of r and c will not remain constant and it will change over the period of time either due to the aging or temperature so due to that the accuracy of this single slope adc is very poor and that is why this adc is not used for the measurement purpose but this problem can be solved by using the dual slope adc so now let us understand the working of the dual slope adc so in case of this dual slope adc there is a switch at the input of the integrator which can connect either to a input voltage or to the reference voltage but initially during the start of the conversion the switch is connected to the input voltage so once the conversion starts then this integrator starts integrating the input signal for a finite time and let's say this time is equal to t1 and if you see the output voltage of the integrator then it can be given as minus 1 by rc times integration of input voltage or after the time t1 we can say that it is equal to minus t1 divided by rc times input voltage and let's say that is equal to v1 now after this time t1 the switch will get connected to the reference voltage so now the integrator will integrate this reference voltage and if you notice the sign of this reference voltage it is negative and usually the magnitude of this reference voltage is larger than the input voltage now due to this negative reference voltage the integrator integrates in the positive direction and after time t1 it will integrate until the output of this integrator reaches the zero volt so this time t2 is the time that is required by the integrator to reach to the zero volt and this time t2 is the direct measure of the input voltage so let us understand it so after this time t1 the integrator output can be given as the initial voltage across the integrator plus minus 1 by rc times integration of input voltage and in this case now the input to the integrator is equal to minus v reference now if you notice over here after this time t1 the initial voltage across the integrator is equal to v1 and for this time t2 this term can be written as minus t1 divided by rc times minus v reference and the initial voltage across the capacitor is equal to v1 so this will be the total voltage across the integrator after the time t1 plus t2 now in this expression if we put the value of v1 then we can write the output voltage v out as t2 divided by rc times v reference plus minus t1 divided by rc times input voltage now one more thing if you notice over here after this time the output of the integrator become zero that means we can say that after this time t1 plus t2 the output of the integrator is equal to zero so if we rearrange the terms then we can write it as t1 divided by rc times v in that is equal to t2 divided by rc times v reference so after cancelling this rc and rearranging this terms we can write the t2 as t1 into input voltage divided by v reference now in this dual slope adc this time t1 and the reference voltage are fixed that means we can say that this time t2 is directly proportional to the input voltage 
So as the input voltage changes, this time T2 will also change. So as you can see over here, as the input voltage increases, then this first slope will also increase. But the second slope will remain same because over here, the value of V reference and RC are fixed. So as the value of input voltage increases, then the time T2 will also increase. So in short, this time T2 gives the direct measure of the input voltage. And now let us understand how we can measure it. So as you can see in this diagram, the output of the integrator is connected to the comparator and the other input to the comparator is connected to the ground terminal. So initially, when the input is connected to the input voltage, then the integrator integrates in the negative direction. That means the inverting terminal of the comparator is negative with respect to the non-inverting terminal. And due to that, the output of the comparator will be high. Now this comparator output is connected to the AND gate. And the clock signal is provided to this N bit counter using this AND gate. So whenever the output of the comparator is high, at that time, this clock pulses will be provided to this N bit counter. And due to that, this counter starts counting from 0 onwards. That means if we combine all these blocks, then we can say that whenever the switch is connected to the input voltage, then the counter starts counting from 0 onwards. And it will count until this overflow bit will become 1. So let's say if we have a 4 bit counter, then it will start counting from all zeros to all 1s. And after all 1s, during the next clock, the overflow bit will become 1. And once this overflow bit becomes 1, then the switch toggles from the input voltage to the reference voltage. So going from all zeros to all 1s, the counter will take total 2 to the power n minus 1 clocks. And after that, in the next clock, whenever the overflow bit will become 1, then this switch will toggle from the input voltage to the reference voltage. So we can say that this input signal will get integrated for total 2 to the power n clocks. And after that, this switch will get toggled to the reference voltage. Now here, as the reference voltage is negative, so integrator starts integrating in the positive direction. But still if you see the output of the integrator, it will still remain negative. That means the output of the comparator is still high. And due to that, the clock signal will be applied to this end bit counter. That means after generating this overflow bit, when the reference voltage is getting integrated, this counter starts counting from 0 onwards. And it will count until the output of the integrator is equal to 0. Because after that, the comparator output will become low. And this clock pulses will not get applied to this counter. So at that time, whatever is the binary output of this n bit counter, it will be directly proportional to the time t2. And in a way we can say that this binary output is directly proportional to the input voltage. So in this way, using this a dual slope ADC, the input voltage can be converted into the digital output. So here, the total conversion time is equal to T1 plus T2. Or we can say that it is equal to 2 to the power n times Tc plus T2. Because the input will get integrated for the 2 to the power n clocks. And here, Tc is the clock duration. So in general, we can say that the conversion time will be equal to 2 to the power n times Tc plus n times Tc where n is the output of this n bit counter. So in the worst case, whenever the input voltage is same as the reference voltage, in that case, both slopes will be equal. And the total conversion time will be equal to 2 times 2 to the power n times Tc. Or we can say that it is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 times Tc. So as you can see, it takes a much longer time for the conversion. And the conversion time of this ADC depends on the resolution that means the number of bits of the ADC as well as the clock frequency. 
and as we increase the resolution that means the number of bits of the counter then the conversion time will increase so to understand that let us put some numbers into this expression so let's say we have a 12 bit dual slope adc and it is operated at the clock speed of 10 megahertz then in the worst case the maximum converted time will be equal to 0.8 millisecond on the other end for a 16 bit adc with the same clock frequency the maximum conversion time would be roughly around 13 millisecond so as you can see as the number of bits increases the conversion time will also increase and that is why we cannot increase the resolution of this type of adc beyond certain extent and of course by increasing the clock frequency we can reduce this conversion time but that too cannot be increased beyond certain limit as the response time of the different components in the adc is the limiting factor and due to that this type of adc is not used for the data acquisition but it provides the good accuracy as well as the noise immunity so if you see this expression of t2 then it is independent of rc that means the value of r and c won't affect the conversion and hence this dual slope adc can provide the good accuracy apart from that this adc also provides the good noise immunity and particularly against the supply frequency noise so due to its good accuracy and the noise immunity this dual slope adc is used in the measurement instruments so i hope in this video you understood the working of this single slope as well as the dual slope adc so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos